over here. I'll have to discuss some holding over energy uses. And it's not the happiest time to exist on this planet. I'm almost running home now because the um, price of electricity per kilowatt hour has it's gone to pretty insane levels. And it seems to be that it's going to hold through the winter. Uh, so I have to actually um, downgrade the home lab and you know, put most of it on standby. But I thought I'd just go through the process and maybe just show you how I stepwise gone through it and you know, help you if you have a home lab and you want to see how much energy and how to reduce the energy consumption. So anyway, energy in our region is um, you, you pay it through that you pay for every kilowatt hour and then there are a transport fee which is separate from the energy cost and then you have uh, energy tax dedicated energy tax and then you have um, value added tax so that's the basically the, um, the combination of costs and um, if we just take budget euros then we're talking about in the high price when it's in the high price region it's between three and five euros per kilowatt hour depending on the time of day uh, we, however, pay an average price per day under the contract that I have. So um, they, they average out the cost uh, for the 24 hours and then somehow calculate a uh, per kilowatt hour cost that I pay. But anyway, it's too high. Uh, it's not really that supportive of, a, of this type of hobby. So I'm going to have to sort of scale back a bit, uh, but still keep the equipment available. So go through and see how we can do that and um, the first issue is to find out are, am I actually using a lot of power uh, for my hobby so um, I've got this simple energy meter here it will tell me how many kilowatts are being used um, so that'll be the first thing is to put this on and see what we find so anyway the first procedure is to save a lot of energy and Turn everything off. I know you're not supposed to do this to servers, but you know, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Um, they have survived power outages before. So this will be the best situation. So there's an on-off switch, it's off. All the equipment is behind the switch and this junction here. And now it doesn't take any power at all, but that's of course not fun because then you can't do anything when it comes to help. So I'm going to um, see if I can connect in the energy meter. And the energy meter has a mechanical problem where you can't plug this directly into here because this this flange prevents it from going down further enough. So I'm going to uh, have to try fiddle it in. Maybe on that side better. Even more tricks needed. Ah, so now you can feel that it really went in. And then we need to take the. <laughs> now it's stuck. Oh, out again. Because we need to actually take that. And we need to take this. Back in. I don't know how you're going to be able to see anything since it's dark in here but then we need to plug that in there so that's the stack and then we put the power back on and let's see if I can fix this so you can see I know all the systems are gonna boot up so this will take a while so oh, now I'm booting up the stuff well, that's 700 to 800 watts. Let's see what it stabilizes to. So, just have a brief review of what I have. I have videos about all this equipment and installing it in if you want to look at it. Look on my um, channel. But anyway, we have a Cisco uh, fabric interconnect switch. And then we have uh, two servers. And as you see, they're not disk fully populated. They have uh, a reasonable amount of RAM, 30, 30 gig 
around that. So it's not fully decked. Um, I have lightweight processes running in them right now. Some web services and stuff for prototyping. And um, so the fabric interconnect handles fiber 10 gig. And then I have a legacy uh, one, one gig um, switch. And now I think the boot ups have stabilized. So let's go have a look at the energy consumption. So anyway, that's used to it. So it, wattage wise, it's around 700 watts to keep the complete system up and running. Probably it varies a little bit depending on, the, yeah, if one uses the device. So maybe you go to 800, 900 watts. So this is a bit too high for 24 seven usage. So we need to drop that down quite significantly, temporarily, at least for these upcoming months. So, step one is to disconnect the we'll power down this one. And we will also turn off the servers. So, that's just with the legacy 1 gig switch uh, running. So, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, Put in a modern one gig switch and replace that legacy gig switch. Um, you know, of course, under this this situation, I can't. There is one drawback: I can't use the 10 gig network as it is now because the fabric interconnect it can't be remotely started and stopped, so it has to be physically powered up. Well, anyway, I have to live with that for the upcoming months or. <laughs> somebody somebody donates funds I can buy myself a low power 10 gig switch right now I can't afford it so I powered down the gig switch and I just snuck the new one in here of course now it's not a real legacy home lab, home lab because um, Swapping up equipment to um, a newer stuff, and this, of course, I mean, it explains it why data centers don't want these old servers anymore. I mean, they're they're in panic mode right now. To, <laughs> the, they can't run their business model with, the, with this generation server. Just power consumption wise. I mean, the cost of p both powering the servers and then getting a hit of getting rid of the waste heat. It's, it's absolutely catastrophically how much it costs now. So their only option is to um, upgrade. Just also have a one gig network. So now I'm going to be living with. Um, so of course I can turn this on if I if I need such experiments and speed. Then I just kind of turn the um, yeah the fabric the fabric switch on again. But um, right now I'm going to be relying on the fact that this has remote terminal or remote web page access to management software on both of these servers. So what I can do is I can remotely access these servers through the ILO interface and I can turn them on and off remotely and then the, the traffic will go through the um, one gig network so anyway one more network kit so that's um standby power 30 watts uh, which is of course the ILO set of computers on the servers and then the switch and um, then, of course, the I do have. Oh, where did I put that? Let me call it, let's see. Let's see if I show. I do have a Raspberry Pi running here, but that the energy consumption is not included. So. Well, anyway, that's a lot better than 800 watts, so I can live with that. And then the. This enables me to remote start the servers if I need to. The fabric switch for the 10 gig network, that, that needs manual startup physically on site. But 
if I need to do such experiments. So, uh, usually electricity is cheaper on the weekends, so I can run some. Ah, some home lab tests then. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this um, video. I didn't. <laughs> I don't enjoy this high energy price situation we're in right now at all. And it, um, yeah, it kind of ruins hobbies because one used to be able to, without breaking the bank, one used to be able to run this equipment on a more continuous basis. I do admit that I, I only ran one of the servers and the fabric interconnect. So I had one of, one of the servers. Basically, if I wasn't going to need it, then it was always off. Yeah, but anyway, let's hope this energy crisis situation sorts itself out so we can get back to a little bit more normal life. Um, but so far, it's already watts. Uh, live with that. And then I will turn the servers on and off as needed. Anyway, um, yeah, buy me a cup of coffee. This wasn't fun. Uh, merch is also available if you're interested. Maybe help me finance a low power 10 gig switch, which I don't have the money for right now. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.